Hey guys, welcome back to Got Douglas channel. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between Mitsubishi Electric's standard heat pumps versus their hyperheat heat pumps. Now this is a common question that people ask whether they should go with the hyperheat route or whether the standard heat pump will be perfect for them. Uh, but this video will hopefully break down some of the differences so you can make an educated decision. So let's get started. Now before we get into talking about the differences between a Mitsubishi Hyperheat versus a Mitsubishi Standard, we just briefly wanted to talk about what is a heat pump. And without getting into the nitty gritty details, um, the physics of how the heat pump works, a heat pump is just a heating and air conditioning component that allows for cooling in the summer and heating in the winter all by using one component that sits outside. Another thing to note before we get into the differences of hyperheat versus standard is that a ductless heat pump differs from a traditional heat pump that you'd see with a conventional unit uh, or central air unit. And the difference is that ductless mini splits uh, always use inverted technology. And that inverted technology helps minimize unnecessary energy usage that is just costing you money. So what is a Mitsubishi standard heat pump? Mitsubishi standard heat pump is a heat pump that works efficiently and produces both cooling and heating, but a limitation of it is that it begins to lose efficiency and capacity the colder that it gets. So for example, for a 24,000 BTU unit, it'll work super uh, efficiently down to around freezing point 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And the colder it gets below that 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the less it'll be able to produce. Meaning that if you have a home or a section of your home that you are designing and you are uh, choosing that 24,000 BTUs um, outdoor unit based on calculations, and that's what it's sized for, the colder it gets, maybe at 17 degrees Fahrenheit, for example, your outdoor unit for standard will only produce 17 to 19,000 BTUs depending on your indoor unit uh, mix. And if your space is sized for 24,000, then you are not gonna get the heat that you need and what is calculated for your space the colder that it gets. But otherwise, if you're in a climate that uh, doesn't get that cold, it stays above freezing point, then the standard outdoor heat pump will be perfect for you for cooling and for heating year-round. Now, Mitsubishi's hyperheat units uh, are a little bit different. The Mitsubishi hyperheat units operate the same way as a standard unit does. However, they operate more efficiently in colder temperature. So let's just say you're in, area, uh, you're in an area that is below the 32 degrees freezing point, and you need a heating option uh, that will sustain you down to the, the negative temperatures like we see in New England or places in the Midwest or in Canada, um, this hyperheat unit will be able to operate down to those extreme cold temperatures. So let's look at an example. So a 24,000 BTU uh, multi-zone uh, outdoor unit or a single zone outdoor unit will be rated at 24,000 um, at a normal 47 degree temperature day. If it gets down to 5 degrees Fahrenheit, which is well below the 32 degrees freezing point, your outdoor unit, if it's hyperheat, is still going to be producing up to 25,000 BTUs of heat. For a 24,000 BTU rated system, those are great numbers and you can rely on that heat source even in the coldest temperatures. So now that we know what both Mitsubishi Hyperheat outdoor heat pumps are and the Mitsubishi Standard heat pumps, now we can look at uh, the both products and compare them uh, based on different features and based on different attributes to help you make it a choice as to which outdoor heat pump you need for your project. So we'll be able to compare the two products by looking at an example. And so we'll look at the Mitsubishi MXZ 3C30 uh, multi-zone outdoor standard unit, which is just a three-zone, two-and-a-half-ton outdoor unit, 
And we'll compare that to the sister uh, hyperheat unit, which is the MXZ3C30NAHZ. All the hyperheat units end with that HZ to help you indicate and realize that it's a hyperheat unit. So we'll look at different uh, attributes that will hopefully help you make a decision as to which unit to choose. The first attribute we'll look at when comparing the standard and uh, hyperheat Mitsubishi 30,000 BTU multi-zone outdoors is performance. And the first category we'll look at is how these uh, units operate in cold climates and what happens to heating capacity the colder it gets. So as mentioned, at 47 degrees Fahrenheit, both outdoor units are kicking and working efficiently, producing 36,000 BTUs um, at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. But the colder it gets, obviously the standard unit will suffer. So let's look at it at 5 degrees Fahrenheit. The standard unit uh, at 30,000 BTUs rated will only output 19 and some change of BTU heating capacity, meaning that it's going to work as hard as it can, but it's only going to be able to produce 19,000. Whereas on the opposite side, the hyperheat unit at 5 degrees Fahrenheit is going to produce 28,400 BTUs, so still right around that 30,000 BTU um, rate that the, um, the system is designed for. But this is the trick. It, when it gets down to the negative degrees, uh, around negative 13 degrees, that standard unit is going to be not working at all. It's going to freeze out, it'll shut off, you won't be able to use it at all. Whereas the hyperheat unit is gonna be able to produce 26,000 BTUs of heating, um, which you could use even in the coldest temperatures. The second attribute we'll talk about is how quiet both of these units are. Now Mitsubishi is known for how quiet their units operate and both the standard and the hyperheat uh, heat pumps are significantly quieter than some other brands, especially quieter than conventional heat pumps. But for the standard, those uh, systems tend to be a little bit quieter whereas uh, the hyperheats will be a little bit uh, noisier, but it's not by much. The standard uh, heat pump will be at 52 decibels for cooling and 54 decibels for heating, whereas the same uh, rated 30,000 BTU uh, hyperheat heat pump will be 54 um, decibels at cooling and 56 at heating. So it's very close, but the hyperheat units tend to be just a tad bit uh, louder than the standard counterparts. Third attribute we'll consider is electrical usage. A standard multi-zone outdoor um, for the 30,000 BTU is only going to require a 25 amp breaker. When you compare that to the hyperheat, um, that one requires 40 amps, where the minimum opacity uh, for a 30,000 BTU standard is around 22 amps, and the hyperheat is 35 amps. The fourth attribute under performance is energy efficiency. Now this is what a lot of people look at when making the final decision. And this is due to um, just considering what it's going to cost to run the system on a daily basis. So if you compare the 3C30 standard versus the 3C30 hyperheat, the numbers are really similar. Where the SEER2 rating for a standard is 19 versus the SEER2 of the hyperheat is 18. But if you look at uh, some of the metrics, um, like the EER2, the hyperheat edges out the standard unit. Now, all these things might see, all these metrics might seem uh, very minute, uh, but the differences um, do make a difference. And I'll tell you why. Really, the difference comes down to whether something is Energy Star certified or not. And if they are, then Energy Star certified products can qualify for utility rebates and tax credits, federal tax credits that are available uh, for the next 10 years. And so the hyperheat, um, even with just the small differences of energy efficiency ratings, the hyperheat is Energy Star certified while the standard unit is not. And this makes a difference. This could mean up to a thousand plus dollars of savings 
to go with the hyperheat versus the standard. Now every single model number is going to be different. We're just looking at the 30,000 BTU units and so for this one the hyperheat is uh, the better uh, more efficient unit to uh, to look at but you have to do research and uh, your God Tuckless team can help you uh, make these decisions on a case-by-case -case basis depending on the size uh, that you are looking at. Another attribute to consider when choosing between standard and hyperheat is installation complexity. So using our example, the 3C30 standard and hyperheat, the installation process is almost identical. Um, there's hardly any difference. But something to consider is depending on the size that you're looking to install, the install could look a lot different. For standard uh, multi-zone outdoor heat pumps, um, you don't have to use a distribution branch box up until after 42,000 BTUs. Whereas for hyperheat um, multi-zone outdoor units, um, the branch box start at 36,000 BTUs, which is a fairly common size. So when you start to use distribution and branch boxes, um, that just increases the complexity of the installation, which could increase labor costs, um, as well as just having someone that absolutely knows what they're doing uh, when it comes down to putting everything together and making sure it works correctly. The last attribute we're gonna talk about is where the rubber meets the road, it's cost. What do both of these cost? And which one is more cost efficient uh, versus the other? So for a standard multi-zone outdoor 30,000 BTU heat pump, uh, it's going to be much cheaper than a 30,000 BTU hyperheat unit. Price difference between the hyperheat and the standard is typically around $800. Now, we're recording this video in 2023, and so prices will always change, and most likely they'll only go up. Um, but the percentage of cost most likely will remain the same. Now, it's up to you to make a decision of where you want to spend money. Whether you spend money um, and uh, spend more upfront to get hyperheat, uh, to get you uh, comfortable heating in the coldest temperatures, or if you live in a colder climate that doesn't go below five degrees Fahrenheit, but might hover between five, uh, five degrees Fahrenheit to around 32 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, uh, then a standard might work well for you, but you'll be spending more money on your utility bills month to month in those quarter days. So it really just depends on where you want to spend the money, depending on the climate that you're in, whether it's in the initial equipment purchase or in the utility bills of uh, running your product in the quarter months. Now that we've taken a look at a 3C30 standard and hyperheat, and we've compared the two products, now we can come to a place where we can make a decision which one should I go with? Now, why would you choose a hyperheat system? Most likely, people that are choosing hyperheat systems are living in climates that could have the potential of going below 5 degrees Fahrenheit. So, they want to make sure that they're going to have consistent heat from one heating source and they're not going to have downtime. And the second um, option or the second group of people that would get hyperheat each time is if they don't have a secondary backup heat source like a boiler or baseboard heaters or something um, along those lines so that could sustain you uh, through some of the colder parts of the year. Now, most people that choose standard units are people that, uh, one, don't live in climates that get relatively that cold. A good example of, the, of this are the Pacific Northwest um, and or the south um, of the eastern uh, eastern coast. Um, they don't get particularly cold. They do get cold, but it's rare for them to get below a 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And so a standard outdoor uh, heat pump would suffice in those, uh, in those areas. And the second subset of people would be um, whether they live in colder temperatures, um, but they have a boiler system or a furnace that can um, back them up in the coldest temperatures. They like that heat source, um, they find it more comfortable, and so they still wanna have that in their home while having an efficient electric option when it's uh, anywhere between um, 60 to 32 degrees and they wanna heat their homes 
with an electric source. So in conclusion, when comparing the Mitsubishi standard outdoor units to the hyperheat outdoor units, there are so many factors to consider and we only touched on some of them. We, there are other factors that we probably didn't even mention, but you need to make the choice that's best for you, um, whether that comes down to Energy Star certification to make sure you get rebates and tax credits, um, or if you just live in a climate that gets colder than five degrees Fahrenheit, you want to make sure that you have a heat source that operates down to um, sub to uh, zero temperatures. So regardless, we are here to help at Got Douglas to help you make the right decision for your family and or business. Um, we are here to, to help with calculations uh, and just support you throughout the process. If you have any questions, feel free to leave your comment below or give us a call or chat through our website and our team is happy to help. If you like what you saw here in this video, please feel free to subscribe and like this video so that we can continue to make great content about mini splits. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.